Now I want to discuss three algorithms. Um, Laplace and eigenmaps, locality preserving projections, and spectral clustering. I've intu intuitively introduced already the last one and the, and the third one, and the locality preserving projections are closely related to the first one. So what we need in any case, we need a graph. And uh, often the data actually doesn't come really directly as a graph, it comes as a set of data entities, a set of samples. And what you need in order to construct a graph is you need some similarity measure. You need to know sort of how similar are two items. And these two items um, are usually not vectors because otherwise you could go into vector space directly. Um, so they could be text or some, they could be graphs by themselves. So something uh, where you can actually calculate the similarity between, between two uh, two samples. And I want to discuss three typical ways of constructing a graph. The one is the epsilon neighborhood graph. And there you would, uh, first of all, you introduce a node for each sample that you have. If you have 1000 samples, text samples or something, then you introduce uh, 1000 nodes for it. Right? So the number of nodes equals the number of samples. And then you go through each pair of nodes or each pair of samples and you calculate the similarity. And in the epsilon neighborhood graph, you would connect two graphs always if their distance is smaller than epsilon. And you can still decide on the weights of the edges. So now we have decided which edges to introduce. And now you could also weight them. But often in this case, uh, the edges are just weighted with one or zero. One if they are within an epsilon neighborhood and zero if they are not. The second method I want to discuss here is the k nearest neighbors. Um, so rather than connecting a node with all its neighbors within epsilon, it is connect each node is connected with the nearest k nearest neighbors. That has the advantage um, that you're guaranteed that each node is at least connected, well, it's exactly connected to, to k nearest neighbors, so you have a certain minimum size of a subgraph. If you have the epsilon neighborhood uh, and you have a very um, unisotropic graph, oh, So let's assume we have a graph like this one here. Then, well, it's a simple example, but if your epsilon, epsilon ball has this size, yeah, then these two nodes are connected, and this one is not connected. So, I mean, this is a very primitive example, but you can imagine a graph which is larger, has 100 nodes, and there are some regions where the nodes tend to lie very close to each other, then they would all be connected. In other regions where they are much farther apart, uh, so maybe I, I, I try to draw an example where this works. So, so now you have a graph which has very, very uh, dense population of nodes here and it's much sparser here. And then you would connect all these ones here locally. Something like this. And these nodes would be just hanging around, isolated, because they are too far apart. So, so you have this fractioning of the graphs. So, and that's prevented by using uh, k nearest neighbors. So, in that case, each node would be uh, connected to its k nearest neighbors, regardless of how large the distances actually are. One complication here is that um, this might lead to a non-symmetric graph. So if node A is connected um, with node B, it doesn't mean that it is also connected the other way around. Uh, for instance, here you see, so here see these nodes are all connected with each other and they maybe if you have two nearest neighbors or something, I mean it doesn't really work for the for the connections that I've drawn here, but if you, you can imagine if you have three nearest neighbor or two nearest neighbors, that these nodes are all connected with each other. 
well, in a similar way as I've drawn it. I mean, they're not all connected with each other, but each one has connections within this cluster, and no one has a connection that reaches out. However, this node, if you connect it to the three nearest neighbors, it would be connected to two of these nodes and this one node. So this has a connection to these ones, to these two, but these would not have a connection here. So therefore, the graph would be would be directed in, in the sense that there's a connection from here to there, but not back again. And there are two ways to deal with this. Um, so either you introduce uh, ed edges only if you have a back and forth connection, that would be the mutual k-nearest neighbor graph. Um, And uh, alternatively, you can always introduce edges. If sort of if this is connected to this one, you also introduce a back connection, and that would be the k-nearest neighbor graph. It's formulated a bit strange here. That's why I'm hesitating. I should rewrite this sentence. Um, yeah, and in this case, usually the edges are weighted by the similarity between the two nodes they connect in order to preserve information about distance, right? If you have this epsilon neighborhood, then it's clear if there's an edge, it's smaller than epsilon. If it's larger than it's larger than epsilon, sorry, if it's if the connection is, is present, then the distance is smaller than epsilon. And if the connection is not present, the distance is larger than epsilon. So you have actually distance information. While with the k nearest neighbors, you have only relative distance information in, in order to um, preserve absolute distance information you weight them by the similarity that you have. So the extreme version of this is if k is the number of nodes uh, in the graph, then you have a fully connected graph. Each node is connected with each node, and then you really need the weights on the edges because otherwise there's no, um, there's no structural information in the graph. And one typical similarity function, if you actually have vectors, would be the Gaussian. Okay, so once you have done used one of these methods to turn your data set into a graph, you can then go and apply one of the following algorithms.